and welcome to the video. My name is Charles Bugge, and I'll be walking you through this process that I used to build an Elasticsearch cluster. In this video, I'm going to be building a three-node ES cluster all running on CentOS 7.9 with HTTPS enabled using a certificate that I signed for my own certificate authority. I'm working from a separate CentOS 7.9 system where I've already set up SSH access to each of the nodes for easy access, to copy all the files and the configurations to each of these systems. The files that you see on the screen right now are the configuration files, certificates, and other information that I'll be using to set up the cluster as we go along. Ready? Let's begin. The first thing that we're going to do is set up the firewall configuration on each of the nodes. Each node is going to need ports 5601, 9200, and 9300 opened, all TCP. 5601 is for Kibana, 9200 is for Elasticsearch, and 9300 is for Elasticsearch cluster communication. Additionally, I prefer to set up each interface on the firewall D zone that relates to where they will be communicating, so I'll be moving the interfaces from their default of public to internal. Looking at node ES001, we can see that it is set up with the public zone. First, we will move the interface to the internal zone. Once it has been moved to the internal zone, we will also go ahead and open the three ports mentioned earlier, 5601, 9200, and 9300. Finally, we will kick in the changes with a reload of firewall D. Let's confirm that those changes are now in effect on the server by doing an info zone. Yep, those are our settings. Now on to ES002. We see ES002 is set up with public, so we issue the same set of commands to ES002 as we did to ES001, and then verify the settings. Yep, all set. Lastly, we do the same thing to ES003. The interface changes, the ports are added, the reload occurs, and then we verify ES003. All of the changes are now in place on all three of the nodes. As mentioned previously, I set up this host with SSH for easy access to the three Elasticsearch nodes. To do this, and also on all three of the nodes, I set up local host file entries for each of the three nodes as well as the fully qualified domain name, or FQDN, of the cluster itself. Here is the host file of the local system I'm working from. As you can see, ES001, 002, and 003 each have their specific IP address listed, as well as the entry for escluster.internal.theitcrowd.org. Each host of 001, 002, and 003, though, will be pointing to itself for the FQDN of escluster, meaning that whenever a configuration on the machine is looking for the cluster, it will look at itself for the source of that information. As I've said, I prepared the systems ahead of time, so let's look at the file es001.hosts, and we will see that escluster points at the .1 IP address. Looking at es002.hosts, we see that escluster points at .2, and then we see that es003.hosts points at .3. Displaying the host file on 001, we can see that these settings are in place. Along with 002 and 003, we can also see that the other two nodes are configured along the same manner. We are now ready to move onto installing Elasticsearch and Kibana onto each of the nodes in the cluster. To install Elasticsearch and Kibana, you'll need to specify the repositories that you will be installing from. In this case, I've built the necessary files ahead of time and here they are. First, elasticsearch.repo. This file will go into slash etsy slash yum.repos.d. Let's go ahead and secure copy it onto all three nodes.
Next is kibana.repo. This file will go into the same directory, slash etsy, slash yum.repos.d. We'll secure copy it onto the three nodes as well. Once both .repo files are in place, we will want to update the repository list on each of the three nodes. We do that by issuing the yum repo list command, which will reach out to each site for each repository on the server and update the local copy of available packages for installation. This process does happen automatically if the information in the local system is stale, that is more than two weeks old, but I prefer to force it each time to make sure the information is as up to date as possible. Now it is time to install Elasticsearch and Kibana onto each of the systems. Since there is no concerns about what I am installing, having already verified everything, I will be issuing the yum command with a dash y parameter to install everything. This makes the installation run with no user interaction by replying yes to any prompts that occur during the installation process, accepting GPG keys, adding in any extra necessary packages, etc. We will start by installing Elasticsearch and Kibana on ES001. Here you can watch as there are only two packages installed onto the system. For the current version of 7.12 of Elasticsearch and Kibana, they are 311 meg and 273 meg respectively in download size, and they will take up a total of 1.2 gig once fully installed. Additional steps for the installation, like user and group creation, may be done at this stage, as well as additional instructions may be shown. We will go ahead and speed through the installation of ES002 and ES003 as they don't show anything different from ES001. Lastly, I want to show you the default settings of the Elasticsearch service as installed on 001, 2, and 3. You can see from each of these screens that while the service is installed, it is not started yet nor is it set to automatically start when the server is rebooted, hence the disabled setting. We will be addressing these settings once we get Elasticsearch configured, and we'll be doing the same for Kibana when we get to that in a few minutes. Let's look at our configuration files. For Elasticsearch, each of the servers will have a slightly different configuration file. Elasticsearch is also going to need the certificate files copied onto each node for it to use. My convention for this is to put the key files into slash var slash keys, and then copy them from there to where I will need them for Elasticsearch. So let's get the directory made, the key file copied over, the certificate file copied over, and then my certificate authorities file copied over onto each node and then we will verify that each node has the three files on them. Elasticsearch requires a copy of the certificate files put into a directory where it can access them as the Elasticsearch user. This means that if you put them into a folder like slash var slash keys like I have them in, which was created by the root user, Elasticsearch the service cannot access the files. The simplest way around this is to create a directory within slash etsy slash Elasticsearch called keys and copy the files into there. This way Elasticsearch can access the files without a rights problem. Let's create the directory on each node and then copy the respective files into place. Now we will look at the default Elasticsearch configuration file. It is located at slash etsy slash Elasticsearch slash Elasticsearch dot YML or YAML it is colloquially referred to as. This configuration file has only two lines in it that are not commented out, and they are here, path.data and path.logs. We will be modifying the path.data parameter to add a data directory to the end of it. We will use the sed command to add the data directory to each of these parameters. 
After that, we'll be taking our es001.es-config file and appending it to the elasticsearch.yaml file. Here is what the file looks like. As you can see from the configuration information, there are three pieces of information that will be unique to ES001. The network.host, the cluster.initial underscore master underscore nodes, and the node.name parameters. The cluster.initial underscore master underscore nodes is only needed once to, well, specify the first master node in the example of my cluster environment. Looking at es002.es-config, this time you can see there are two pieces of information that are unique. This time, just the network.host and the node.name. And finally, looking at es003.es-config, we see that it is again just two pieces of information that are unique, the network.host and the node.name. Let's go ahead and append each of these config files onto their respective YAML files of the proper nodes. First we will do this for ES001, and then we will do it for ES002 and 003. Now we are ready to go ahead and start Elasticsearch. We will go ahead and start Elasticsearch first on node 001, since it was designated as the master in the configuration file. We are watching the starting of Elasticsearch in real time to show that the start of the first node in a cluster does sometimes take a little while, due to the necessary initialization that needs to occur. Once we have returned to a command prompt, let's take a look and see what the status of the service is. As you can see from the highlighting, the service is definitely running. Let's go ahead and start up Elasticsearch on ES002 and 003 now. These services are being shown as starting in real time to make clear that the initial start of these services takes a while because they aren't just starting. They're also passing information back and forth between cluster members and this is not instantaneous. Looking at the statuses on 2 and 3, we can see that it is running on both of these, no problem. Next, we are going to issue a simple curl command to the cluster to see how the cluster's status is. From the curl's results, you can see that the cluster status is green, meaning all is good. The cluster can also see all three of the nodes that we created, so we are good to go. As mentioned before, typing out the host file of the machine I'm on, you can see that I am using cluster address of dot three. I will quickly switch my local host file and cycle through the IP addresses for dot .1 and dot .2 using the ping command to confirm the address change and then issue the same curl command to confirm that I am getting the same cluster results from each system. Finally, I'll go ahead and enable the Elasticsearch service on each of the nodes so that whenever the system is restarted, the service will start at boot. Looking at ES001, we can see that the service is still running and the service is now enabled, where previously it had been disabled, so it will now start at the boot of the server. We only have one more thing to do, and that is to go ahead and get Kibana configured and running. While in most cases you don't necessarily want Kibana running on the same nodes as your Elasticsearch cluster, I did to simplify my environment here for this demonstration. Let's look at my Kibana configuration file appropriately named kibana.config. This file will be the same for all environments as the default configuration for Kibana, located on each of the nodes at slash etsy slash kibana slash kibana.yaml, has nothing set in it by default. 
all of the configuration in that file is commented out. Everything that we will need is in this configuration file. Since we'll be accessing the Elasticsearch cluster via its fully qualified domain name, I am not using the IP addresses of the nodes, just the FQDN. Since this is the case, the configuration file you see on the screen is the same for all nodes, and since each local host's file is pointing to itself for the FQDN, this means that Kibana will be accessing itself for all of its work distributing the load on the cluster. Let's go ahead and append the configuration file to each remote Kibana YAML file. Once this is done, we can go ahead and start Kibana on each of the three hosts. After starting Kibana, let's make sure that Kibana started on each of the hosts successfully. And as you can see, it has, but the service itself is still disabled. We will now enable the services and now Kibana will auto start on each of the servers. Displaying the status of the Kibana service one last time, you can see that Kibana is now enabled and ready for a server reboot. I'd like to thank you for watching this video on setting up an Elasticsearch cluster. While there are many ways that this cluster could have been built differently, my hope was to give you an introductory idea of how a cluster can be built, the basics to get you started, and enough information for you to start working on your own. Thank you, and best wishes.